Welcome back to the channel guys. Thanks so much for watching. Today we'll be making an adobo paste marinated and grilled tri-tip. That's right, we're going West Coast style and we'll be using this wonderful piece of beef known as a tri-tip. Uh, so these are super popular on the West Coast. Uh, they come from the sirloin, so it's got that super strong beefy flavor. They're fairly inexpensive compared to other roasts. Uh, they're just a little bit harder to find if you're not on the west coast so i'm outside chicago and i've only learned about these uh, about two years ago or so so it took a little bit of a uh, finding uh, locally until i found a butcher shop that actually carries them and can get them for me uh, so just look around uh, if you can't find it locally you can always order them online there's plenty of uh, of meat purveyors that will ship them to you uh, but finding them locally is probably your best bet as far as the seasoning goes we'll be using this adobo paste rub so i also picked this up at my local mexican market i'll have the recipe in the description for how i make it from scratch uh, but I use this uh, kind of pre-made stuff which tastes really good on its own. As far as the prep on the tri-tip goes, we're going to keep it very simple. So we'll make a simple marinade, throw the tri-tip in for a couple hours, and then cook it on the big green egg using the reverse sear method. So we'll bring it up low and slow first, and then we'll sear it directly over the hot charcoal. Should be delicious. So let's get started. As far as the marinade goes, our base ingredient will be this adobo paste. So make the marinade using this, uh, the juice of a couple of limes, and then we'll thin it out with some chicken stock just to add some of that uh, savory uh, richness from the uh, chicken stock. I'm a big fan of Mexican cooking, uh, using those Mexican flavors and spices, uh, citrusy, smoky, spicy. Uh, it's all really good stuff, which is why using this adobo paste is one of my go-to marinades for beef, pork, uh, and chicken. Now the adobo paste itself, uh, is consists of fairly simple ingredients. It's uh, vinegar, paprika, smoked chipotle pepper, so it all comes down really nicely, especially when you let your meat sit in it and absorb absorb those spices before going on the grill. Now the paste itself is uh, pretty thick. You can use it as is, uh, even if you make the recipe from scratch or you buy the pre-made stuff, but I like to thin it out a little bit, which is why I'm gonna be using the chicken stock to help with that along with the uh, fresh squeezed lime juice. Let's get started on our marinade. We'll use our bowl and I'm gonna use about two, two, three tablespoons of, uh, of our adobe paste. Man, this stuff smells so good. It is, it is, it is super tasty. It's got that nice smoky flavor, a uh, little bit of heat to it, not too much. This will be, this will be delicious. Okay, to that we'll add about, about a half a cup of uh, chicken stock. Let's mix this all in a little bit. Again, simple ingredients. We're gonna make this as easy as possible. Get that nice, rich red color out of the marinade. Now we'll add the juice of two limes, so this will add that nice zing and tanginess to our marinade. Okay, let's mix all this together, and our marinade is set. Okay, let's get the tri-tip out. There she is, huh? Look at this. So, uh, this guy is trimmed up pretty well. Uh, you can leave the smaller pieces of fat on, that's not a big deal. Uh, really, the ones that you want to focus on when trimming this is the silver skin. So, like the thicker white pieces that you see on the edge, because this stuff's going to be super chewy uh, once it's cooked. So, I'm going to cut this off here in just a second. But uh, one other thing that I want to point out on a tri tip is the direction of the grain. So I'm not sure how well you can see it here, but on this side, the grain goes like this, up to about this point, and then it goes like this on this side. So after we're done cooking it, it'll be super important to slice the tri-tip kind of two different ways. So we'll go this way against the grain on this side, and then this way across the grain on this side. Uh, this will just ensure for a much more tender bite uh, after the tri-tip is cooked. So let's prep this up. Let me remove the little bit of a silver skin that's on this side here using our knife. So just cut it right off. Super simple, again, just removing that kind of chewy fat that's not gonna render down after this thing is cooked. Okay, I think that looks, uh, that looks pretty good. So let's toss this guy in the marinade. 
toss it right in. Just get it all coated. Oh man, this will be so good, I can't wait. Okay, just like that. Okay, so now I'm gonna put this thing in the fridge, let it sit for a couple hours. You wanna give it about two, three hours uh, at least to really give it time to let that marinade absorb into the meat and get all those delicious flavors uh, into it. Our tri-tip has been marinating now for a couple hours, so I went ahead and fired up the big green egg. So I'm gonna be cooking this, uh, the reverse sear method. I'll link my other video kind of explains uh, the full process start to finish. But in short, the idea is to bring up the uh, tri-tip uh, with indirect heat, low and slow. So about 250 degrees until it hits about 110 internal or so. Then I'm gonna crank up the heat on the big green egg and give it a nice sear over the charcoal to give it a nice crust on the outside and really bring out all the awesome flavors. All right, so the big green egg is coming up to temperature, sitting at about 225 now. So I'm gonna go ahead and put my marinated tri-tip on which looks awesome by the way smells even better and get this thing going all right let's get this guy going so I'll just take it right out of the marinade just kind of give it another dip and put it right on the grates right in the middle and the last thing that we'll do is I'll take my temperature probe stick it right in the middle of the uh, tri-tip to keep an eye on these internal temperatures I'll let this guy cook. For the temperature monitoring, I'm using the uh, Thermalworks Smoke X4. So it's a four channel uh, thermometer. I've got my uh, alarm set for 110 internal. So when the tri-tip hits 110, the alarm will go off and I'll know it's time to uh, start searing it. All right, our tri-tip is approaching 110. So let's go ahead and take a look. Oops, there's the alarm. Turn that off. All right, so it's looking pretty good. So I'm gonna pull it right now. I'll remove the plate setter that's set up for indirect cooking. I'll open up the vents, raise the temperature, and then give this guy a sear to get that nice crust on the outside. And our tri-tip will be done. Okay, let's get the egg ready for the sear. So I'll take the grate off and I'll remove the plate setter, which is the heat shield between the charcoal and the grate. Now we'll put the grate back on. And this thing is ready for the sear. So I'm gonna leave the lid open, let this come up to temperature, get it nice and hot, and then we'll sear the tri-tip directly over the charcoal on the grate, give it that nice finish. The egg is cruising at about 550, 600 degrees. It's nice and hot. Let's get our uh, tri-tip seared off. So we'll just pick it up, throw it right on the grate. For the sear, I'm gonna leave the lid open because I don't wanna cook it too much. I just wanna get a nice sear and that nice crust built on the outside. So I'm gonna let it go about two minutes per side, uh, flip it, and then uh, my target finish temperature is gonna be right around the 125, 128 degree range for uh, medium rare. If you wanna go medium on it, take it to about 135 or so for that nice uh, medium finish. Okay, it's been about two minutes. Let's give this guy a flip, see how it's looking. Oh yeah, look at that. That's an awesome char. Nice crust building up on it. This will be delicious. Let me just even it out here a little bit. And do the other side. All right, our tri-tip is looking pretty good. Just hit about 125 internal, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pull it off. Man, awesome sear, nice crust. Let's pull it off, bring it inside, see how it turned out. All right, so our tri-tip's been resting for a good 15 minutes, so now it's time to cut it. So as I mentioned earlier, it's important to slice against the grain uh, because it goes in two different directions. So it goes this way up to about this point, and then it goes this way on this part of it. So I'm gonna slice it right down the middle first. Nice, super juicy, and it's been resting for 15 minutes and the juice is still coming out of it, so that is, that is a really good sign. Okay, so let's take this piece right here. So the grain goes in this direction, so I'm gonna slice it against the grain, just like so. Man, this looks great. So with tri-tip, I like to keep the slices fairly thin. Look at that. All right, let's give this guy a taste. 
Man, these pieces smell so good. Not sure how well you can see, get that nice uh, pink in the middle. Let's give it a taste. Mm. Oh man. That is delicious. Those Mexican spices, that adobo uh, paste hits you right away. You get the chili flavors, the smokiness out of it, and the little uh, subtle zinc from the lime juice uh, really helps a lot. And then the nice salty finish from the finishing salt. Uh, the crust, the uh, sear from the charcoal is also amazing. Uh, it's, it's really, really delicious. Let me try another piece here. Yeah. So good. As far as uh, serving it or how you can eat it, uh, slicing it thin like this, it makes awesome, awesome sandwiches. Uh, you can chop it up, make it, uh, put it on tacos. Um, also make nachos with it, uh, save it for the next day. Uh, really applications are limitless with tri-tip. It's such a versatile cut. You get that nice beefy flavor from it, uh, which is what it's known for. And then slicing it against the grain like we did gives it a nice mouth feel and a very tender feel and a very tender bite. So good. All right, so that's gonna be it for this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of the video. If you liked it, if you like what I'm doing, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and thanks again for watching.